Dear, dear friends, it is a delight again to what, welcome you to our home. Linda and I miss you greatly. Uh, the Eureka Rehabilitation uh, Care Home has been uh, meat and drink for our souls for a decade plus, and we miss all of you ever so much. So, certainly with that in mind, I'd like to open in prayer. Father, thank you indeed for uh, even this opportunity to share with our friends, our loved ones. And I think of Carol and Laura and Jennifer and uh, Alex, uh, Linda. Lord, I think of Ray and Guy and Alan and oh, so many more. And all those that are caring, Emily, uh, Karina, Sage, and certainly others, Lord. Father, I pray your blessing upon them even now to your glory and honor, Lord. To your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have a devotion for you, and uh, that's, uh, well, that's news that you got to deal with. But Linda has got some music for you, and that's really the good news, and she's going to go take care of that and get the piano warmed up, kind of build a fire underneath it and all that good stuff, okay? And we'll be there in just a little bit. So go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. I better get a kiss. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> So I'd like to take you with just a bit of a devotion. And if I was going to put a title on this devotion, it would simply be Knowing Jesus. With this in mind, consider a man named Saul some 2,000 years ago. He was a rising star in uh, the religion of the Jews. He had all the right uh, background. Uh, he had all the right teaching. He knew all the important people. He really did. However, he just hated this new and up-and-coming thing, this Jesus thing. He hated the Christians. He hunted them down. He hurt them. He imprisoned them. He did some awful things to them, bad things. And then on a trip to Damascus where he was hunting Christians, he met Jesus, and his life was completely turned around, changed absolutely. Saul's name turned into Paul, and you certainly have heard me share about him in the past. He would write to the very first church in Europe, which was at Philippi in Greece some 2,000 years ago. In chapter 3 of that uh, letter, Verse 8, he would write, Also I count all things a loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Once Paul had come to know who Jesus Christ really was, all the power that he had, all the prestige that he had, hey, the up-and-coming rising star, the influence, it meant nothing to him anymore. Earlier in the, the previous verse, verse 7, he would say, But what things I were, that were gained to me, I have counted them loss for Christ. That was all junk to him anymore. The stuff of the rising star of the Jewish religion was now just stuff. And it just wasn't, and it didn't amount to anything to him. What mattered most for him, and this is what this devotion is all about, is to know Jesus Christ. Question, what is there about the knowledge of Jesus Christ that makes it so desirable that someone like Paul and countless others should what desire that knowledge? First of all, how do we gain it? Take note, it must be personal knowledge. It must be a heartfelt knowledge. It must be an intelligent knowledge. It must be an affectionate, loving knowledge. It must be an exciting knowledge. You're hungering for that closeness and that walkness, a walk with Jesus. And you know what? It needs to be a happy knowledge. Knowing Jesus, there is no greater thing. How do we get it? How do we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, really, we do it with the Bible. We do it with His Word. We do it with His Word. In fact, in as Paul would call it, the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus would share in, 
in the Gospels this very directly to his disciples. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To learn of our Lord, the knowledge of the Lord, knowing Jesus. Listen this with your heart. All I once held dear and built my life upon, all this world reveres and wants to own, all I once thought gain, I have counted loss, spent and worthless now, compared to this, knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord. Father God, that you would so bless those at the care home, even as they hear this and as they contemplate it, Lord. Lord, the essence of knowing you as Savior and Lord, there is no greater thing. You are our righteousness, you are our rock, you are our strength. Indeed, you are our absolute redeemer. And we so thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to take you back inside, and Linda should have that piano warmed up. <laughs>